Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our brand new redstone tutorial series. In this series, we're going to be showing you guys a range of redstone tutorial based stuff, but we're going to get into the simpler terms of doing it redstone itself at later dates. I wanted to get out a couple of farm tutorials first, because with the observer block in the Xbox One, PS4, consoles, the Wii, things like that, essentially, any farm can be made fully automatic now without the use of bud detectors and things like that because the observer block does that all for you. It makes the redstone a hell of a lot simpler. Now, if you look back at older videos for console uh, automatic farms, you might find that they pose that they're lossless and things like that. Now, the way you can make these things lossless, I haven't done it on this one, but a good way you could do it, you could run a minecart track with a hopper minecart underneath on this and then just have a a hopper in the middle so every so often when it's bouncing back and forth it could just drop it into your hopper now this one is just set up so that essentially every time this middle one grows let's just put a couple on into like this it harvests the bottom uh, well the top two layers of it and then the pistons push it into the water now it's currently set so that's because the latest update stopped items being pushed properly by pistons you will have noticed on that one and it's happened again here that some of the items don't quite make it the full block to the water the ring of glass around the outside is just to stop items bouncing out too far away to keep them pointing in the right direction. You can also do this by expanding it out just another block as well if you want it to go in the water perfectly. But essentially, this farm is really simple to build because all it requires is essentially one water bucket, but you could do with two, especially if you want to get this sneakily extra bit of crops, which you have right on the end there, because it's where the hopper is, is what I've done on this one here as well. You could move the water stream one in, but then that's one extra space of sugarcane. It's also an easily styleable unit, because if we get hold of some grass here, you could stack the grass on the fourth, uh, this block right here, but they will need light. Like, the sugarcane will grow eventually, but the darkness levels makes it grow a lot slower than anything over there. And then when people say that things grow faster on sand or on grass, that's not true. They grow at the same rates. So first of all, place your water source and dig it out so that it goes the eight blocks in length. I think it's one more. Nope, that's fine. But next you'll want to place your hopper against the dirt block underneath it and then grab yourself two chests. Normal chests will do fine. You don't need trap chests or anything like that for this. It's going to work as normal. Second bucket, place it right there because that means that we can place uh, the sugar cane on the extra block if we want it to. But then again, you could just use these eight if you wanted to keep it nice and small. Now, this next layer needs all of the pistons that you guys are going to be using. And then behind the pistons, just a line of blocks. And then above this, all we want to do now is place another line of blocks here. And we're going to remove any of these. It really makes no difference where the observer is because the redstone line at the back would have to just be 15 in length. So obviously from this one, one, two, three, four, five, it's more than enough. Like if you ever want to do anything like tileable, use glowstone because the glowstone will allow the redstone to travel up vertically in a line. So anyway, but yeah, that's essentially the farm is one observer, a load of redstone dust behind it on the level with the piston. So that the piston activates when it grows. And that's pretty much it. It's one of the simplest farms you guys will ever need. And I recommend it. You get it built very early on in a world because then as you're doing your other jobs, every time you load the area in, you will gain ridiculous amounts of sugarcane. You don't need these over extravagant sugarcane farms unless you're focusing on librarian villagers for paper trading. Then I would let you go all hell for leather and pick one of the most efficient farms. I wouldn't go for one that's fully automatic. I would probably get one that you probably want to set for yourselves. But yeah, anything fully automatic, you could leave it running for ages. And every time you're in the area, it'll harvest itself. And eventually you'll end up with double chest upon double chest of sugarcane. Thank you very much for watching this simple tutorial. And I guess I will see you all again in the next one. Bye-bye.